new Super Nintendo game is coming out in Japan. Oh, well, you know, with homebrew stuff going on, re-releases of, you know, games that are licensed out, prototypes that are found and released, um, it's not a shock that, you know, games 20 years are coming out. But what's special here is that this game was a Satellaview only game, which was a download release for the Satellaview. Uh, add-on, which was a, a, you know, a download service uh, back in the day in Japan. So the game, oh my god, I gotta, I gotta try to pronounce this name. The game was a side-scrolling sort of uh, hack and slasher slash beat up called Kaizu Chujin Shubi Binman Zero. We'll just call it KCSZ for short. Uh, <laughs> it was available for, let's see, between March 30th, 97, and February uh, 28th of 98 during the Satellaview service. It's a pseudo-sequel to the earlier Kaizu Shoujin Shibibiman and Kaizu Shoujin Shibibiman 2 Aratanaru Teki known as Shockman in English and, and Shockman came out here. Um, woo! Alright, so the game is a is a platformer slash beat 'em up hybrid or hack and slasher. You can always make the call for what, what's the genre dish, uh, what's the genre differences there. It makes use of according to uh, the Satellite of You Wikia makes use of numerous Japanese Toku television cliches in a playful manner. The player guides a character through levels, punching, kicking, and throwing special attacks at putty patrol like enemies, going left to right or down to up until the player reaches the boss. The player must then defeat the boss. Um, the challenge to the game comes from trying to get a very high score at the end. Uh, da -da -da. Trying to reach number one is speculated to have been a competitive event between Satellaview players that would result in the award of prizes. Um, it's easy to pick up and play, especially for casual gamers. Um, so that's that's cool. This was developed by Nippon Computer uh, Systems and published by Nintendo. Well, that's the key. Nintendo was a publisher. Because this release is going to be on a cartridge. And I don't think Nintendo is involved with this. So, I don't know if there's going to be a cease and desist coming uh, or not. But yeah, it's going to be released in a, a Super Famicom cart with the sort of VHS style box that Super Famicom games had. Some other quick information on uh, this new release. That we can just call Shockman Zero uh, for short. <laughs> uh, it looks like, yeah, it looks like the, the, the Nintendo no longer has the, the publishing rights. They should be okay, it looks like. Um, it's for one or two players. And uh, it's interesting is that the description, the, this product is a game cassette that can be enjoyed on 16-bit game machines that are SFC slash SFC compatible, which means Super Famicom. The remodeled town Shubibin Mon Zero is a comical and fantastic action game that could be only enjoyed with satellite broadcasting game delivery about 20 years ago. It's Ruby and Azuki. Uh, they're the ones fighting to protect the town from the BB team aiming for world conquest. Like, like before, it's like a side-scrolling with a beat-em-up. It looks like some platforming elements. It's two-player simultaneous action. Um, da -da -da. This may not operate on a certain Super Famicom or Super Famicom compatible machine. It may it may not operate depending upon manufacturing time. What? I guess they're just putting that in uh, as a disclaimer, just in case you have your Super Famicom or Super Nintendo, or you know maybe have a, a weird clone console. If it doesn't work, they can get away with it. I'm guessing. Let me translate the page on 4gamer.net right here. The game is going to be released. Uh, da da da. June, late June 2017, uh, limited, qu uh, limited quantity, suggested retail price of 7,000 yen just about, which if we do the math is equal to yen to dollar, about $63 US. So probably the price of a new Super Famicom game back in the late 90s, that's how much you're going to be paying for this download title. So I, I've never played this before. The graphics look, look cute. Um, 
I think it's it's interesting that a game like this that no one had a chance to buy back then. Hell, we didn't have a chance to even know about it here in North America. Now you have a chance to do that. Um, which means it leads me to another point about probably the most important Satellaview game. Uh, we talked about the Kirby ones before and how they're trying to find a couple of those to preserve them um, on, the, on the download carts that you know that you would get for the Satellaview games. How about the Legend of Zelda ones? And getting those uh, backed up or available to play. What if Nintendo even just put out on virtual console the Satellaview uh, Link to the Past games? That would be amazing. They're not going to put on a cartridge, but what if they did that? Uh, I think that would be huge uh, news in the mainstream uh, gaming world, not just for for us uh, weirdo retro gamers. Uh, <laughs> so if you can go on Amazon, you could uh, somehow order this. I, I guess Nintendo doesn't have the rights to this anymore in terms of publishing, uh, I'm guessing. Uh, you can go on right now. Product will be released on June 30th. Uh, I can buy the Amazon Limited Edition or the No Limitation Edition, which is a thousand yen less. So that would cost roughly, I guess, fifty something dollars instead of sixty uh, three. What's the difference? I don't know. Um, hopefully, the next podcast you will not be hearing, you know, a cease and desist uh, story about this. But I think it's great. This is great for game preservation and just getting the the word out because w- without this. Uh, being for sale, it's a game that people like me would may, may have never heard of. May have never heard of this, uh, you know, unique, obscure Satellaview game. 